Hey guys, it's Jason with your Hopium Free Crypto channel. Today we're going to deep dive into Solana and look at the fundamentals plus a look at the price charts to figure out whether now is a good time to buy Solana or should we be waiting. All right, so let's dive into the details, but first hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, bell notification icon. Let's get the channel to 150,000 subscribers. Plus follow me on Twitter and Instagram so you can stay up to date with the crypto news. Plus check out my retirement fund portfolio and daily Q&As. Let's dive in. Now I'm going to break the video up into the fundamentals and then the charts. So we're going to get a starting point here with Sol being $47.60 at a market cap of 12.8 billion. The overall market cap is 2.2 trillion with Bitcoin sitting at 56,000 and a 1 trillion market cap plus Ethereum at $3,377 and a $392 billion market cap. Now these are important because we are starting from this position at 15th with Solana at $12.6 billion and $46 for Sol. So what is Solana? What is it trying to do? And what are the key points of difference? So it's a high speed single layer blockchain, fourth generation blockchain. So it's essentially all the old blockchains plus some new stuff smart contracts, anonymity, speed, secure, censorship resistant. One of the fastest blockchains in the world currently with 50,000 transactions per second. And it works on proof of history, whereas Bitcoin works on proof of work. And Ethereum is also proof of work, but hopefully eventually moving across to proof of stake. Solana's key points of difference is that it uses proof of history. And we'll look at that in just a little bit more detail in a bit. Now there's 50,000 transactions per second, which, which does make it one of the fastest blockchains. What problems is Solana trying to solve? Expandable and resilient to censorship. So we'd want it to be censorship resistant, transaction settlement speeds and bandwidth. And of course, fees. With all of this on top of it, the fees should be cheaper. For a simplified version of proof of history, it is built to solve the problem of time in distributed networks in where there is not a single trusted source of time. So this eliminates the need for the broadcast of timestamps across the network, improving overall network efficiency. Now the blocks are generating their individual timestamps. So previously, well in proof of stake, you need to have a timestamp for each of the blocks, but then who is going to be trusted to tell that this is the time of that block? Therefore, they have to distribute or broadcast that timestamp across the network. However, Solana has said that found a way to improve this efficiency by putting a timestamp on each of the blocks and that can all be trusted once they receive the block, once the block gets into the chain. For some of the pros, we have a layer one blockchain with Solana. Unlike Ethereum that needs to go from Ethereum to layer twos like Loopring, Polygon or XDAI, it doesn't need to do that in order to be affordable. It has such cheap transactions in its current layer one form. So the layer two is necessary to bring down the transaction costs. Also, there's a detailed list of innovations here, which we can find on the Binance Academy website. So there's a lot of detail over there as well. Now, Solana also has big financial backers, which we'll have a look at briefly in the tokenomics. The cons to it, which continue to come up, you'll see in Twitter, is the decentralization. We'll have a look at that also in just a moment. So is Solana the answer to the smart contracts? Well, at least it has smart contracts and DeFi working on it. Polkadot and Cardano don't have smart contracts yet, or at least at the time of this video. ADA in particular valued at 42 billion, yet the Cardano team estimates smart contracts to arrive in August. So then on top of that, there's probably a three to six months time for the builders to audit their projects and then for it to be on the chain. At this point in time, Solana is winning that battle. Transactions, 50,000 settled in 0.4 of a second. So that's the block time. So in two seconds, you'd have five blocks equaling about 250,000 transactions within two seconds. Theoretical transactions per second is 700,000. The average fee is about 0.00001 of a dollar. So this is very cheap in comparison to Cardano, Binance Smart Chain, DOT, Ethereum, even though DOT and ADA don't have smart contracts, theoretically speaking, this is probably the cheapest out there. As for tokenomics, the inflation rate is at 8%. Now the community voted on this and it's been brought in that there is an inflation of 8%. It'll be reduced by 15% per year until it's down to 1.5%, which is due in about 10 years being 2031. Before we look at the token release schedule, this is a look at the sale of the tokens. Four cents was one sold. That's what it was at the seed sale around conducted 
on April 5th, 2018. It was selling, they were selling 16% of all Sol. Founding sale sold nearly 13% of Sol at a cost of 20 cents per Sol. Validator sale overview was on the July 9th, 2019 at a rate of 22 and a half cents per Sol, selling another 5%. Strategic sale at 25 cents. Coinlist auction was at 22 cents per Sol, and that was another 1.6% of the company. Now, when we look at the supply, which we can also see a little further down, Sol token release schedule. So I've got all these here and they've added them up to be around 414,800,000. There was a big release in January, but according to Coin Bureau's video, which I'll credit here, lucrative vesting rewards may be the reason for the token price not dumping when the unlock period arrived in January. So there was a lot of coins released in January. The price didn't dump. So potentially, and what Coin Bureau is speculating here, is that the token price didn't dump because there's a lot of rewards to come for people who are holding. And as for that opinion piece, it can be found here on his video in this section, Sol Update Tokenomics. Now for a coin to be successful, we like to see it on multiple major exchanges. And Solana has the exchange support. As I've found, you can buy it on CoinSpot and SwiftX in Australia. Of course, Binance as well, and it's on FTX. It's on many of the major exchanges if you were looking to purchase it. And that also opens up the field for Solana to be widely available to many investors. FTX supports the ecosystem the best, and the ecosystem comes down to a lot of the projects that are being built on Solana, things like Serum and Radium, which are getting a lot of the limelight at the moment. Now for the development, developers are building. We're most likely to see many of the projects being launched in about two to three months. However, we're still seeing some release now, so they're just building and releasing it in stages. This is a great thing for the project. Now, is it an ETH killer? Solana is designed to work with Ethereum. Devs are working on the wormhole to allow the bridging of ERC-20 into assets on Solana without going via an exchange. It's not designed to kill ETH, it's, it is designed to work with it. Stablecoin support, Solana has native USDT and USDC, so it means there's tokens on the blockchain and not some wrapped version. Now, in discussion of Solana working with Ethereum as opposed to against it and trying to beat it, one of my favorite threads on Twitter for this is from Adam Cochran and from around number nine of 33 through to about 15, we can see the reasons why. So I'll go through this with you guys now. Solana is uh, similar to the internet's infrastructure. Ethereum acts as its onboarding backbone that is critical public goods infrastructure. But that has and always will have some trade-offs on capacity and performance in certain areas. That's part of why we need layer twos, which will be kick-ass, but also have their own trade-offs. Since those weren't ready for prime time, we saw a lot of subpar centralized EVM forks pop up to capitalize on retail demand. It's cemented for the industry that there exists a trade-off spectrums for products that other user cohorts are willing to make. And this is where Solana comes in where Ethereum focuses on maximizing decentralization, trustlessness, and accessibility of the state machine, Solana aims to make slight trade-offs in these and how state is stored in order to optimize for raw processing power. Think of it like a computer. Ethereum is a CPU, Solana is a GPU. Both of them optimized towards different types of operations and states. These chains are actually complementary as they fill different needs, and it's part of why we see groups like Audius Project leveraging both. If ETH is a 10 on the decentralized access scale, then SOL is a 7 or 8, simply because the cost of running a validator requires a much more robust system. Either way, this is certainly better than a negative 4 that BSC would score. So although it may not be a negative 4, it's still a hell of a lot better in the decentralized realm than Binance Smart Chain, and most people understand that. He's not saying that it is more decentralized than ETH, but it also has a couple of trade-offs, which allows it to be cheaper than ETH as a layer one. And that's why he's talking about Audius working with both. Finally, a look at the team and funding before we have a look at the charts. VC funding to Bootstrap, Alameda Research and FTX Exchange. CEO of both is Sam Bakeman fried 29 year old crypto genius worth over 10 billion, my words of course, with an earn to give back plan. So the money that he earns, he wants to give back to society. Solana has interested parties that are wealthy and don't care about that. They care about blockchain for all. So I like that because we're not just looking for the profits and I'm not someone to say that profits are bad, but there's got to be a bigger reason to be doing something, especially in such a new space. 
Discord, Twitter, and Telegram, very active, and teams are constantly looking for devs and builders. So if you're looking to get into crypto, maybe have a look at Solana. You could possibly start there. Solana is helping to fund new projects with good ideas. Solana is also partnered with Chainlink for Oracles and other services. Now over to the charts, and is it too late to be buying Sol? From the lows that it's set in December to the current price, it's up around 4,000%. So it is a long way from the lows. The risk is getting higher now. However, with our view of the bull market continuing on for some time, I still think it may be early days, but the big gains are gone. So I'm not going to get my hopes up for another 4,000% return from here within this bull market. However, when the market does drop at some point, as it always inevitably does, then I'll be looking to purchase more Solana, but I think there might be a little more of a sustained bear market while development continues to happen. So regardless of what we think about a potential super cycle in the market, I think we'll still see some projects take quite a long time in the development stage, which is a good thing, and price just becomes a little bit sideways and stagnant as we've seen through the later half of 2020. But I think there'll still be some more development to come and that's where the prices will begin to head sideways and possibly down. I think they're good times to be dollar cost averaging in if you have a plan. So if you don't have a plan, check out the videos on my channel after this video and you'll be able to see how to set yourself up a dollar cost averaging plan, what to do. Right now, let's have a look at some of the measures on the chart. Now, I wanna start with time. Time is the most important aspect of any market because if you get the timing wrong you won't make very good money or any money at all the first thing i've got here is just a simple day count so i've just been measuring some ranges 26 days up to this point here four days down 21 days up five days down seven days up four days down we've seen 22 days up to this next peak four days down 17 up six down about another seven days up, three or four days down. So if you're noticing a pattern here, during its bull market, it is having between three and six day corrections. Very, very short time periods for the market to go in a corrective phase. For the up move, we're getting a long move of around four weeks, then a shorter move of three weeks, and then the shortest move of about one week. And that just keeps repeating, 22, 17, seven. So if we are beginning to start this cycle again, I suspect we might get something like a 26 or a 22 day move from this low if this happens to be the low. The thing that's got me a little bit concerned is that we've tried to push to new highs and have had two straight days down at the moment with high volume from yesterday. Now, if you're watching this in the future, you'll have the answer to this already. But long term, I like the look of Solana. So I'll do some update videos on Solana and its price action in the future. Currently, this piece here, we have seen it bounce off the 50%, so $21, and it's done 200% of the range from March through to April. So that is usually a point where the market is going to hit some resistance. Now, if we move this to the top, then we have a 50% level of around $31. I'll also move this to the bottom of our range that we are questioning. And our 50% level comes out at about $35.70. So if we call it around $36, should this be the top, then I think we could see a small correction, a quick, potentially quick correction to around $36 to $39. So at the current level of $47, it doesn't look too bad. Now the next possibility is looking for a bullish scenario rather than this being the top. And potentially we just shoot straight through this top. If that's the case, we're not too far from the top at $50 and it's only about six or 7% from the high now. So I would be willing to wait for the market to confirm that we're in another bull market, that we're about to head up again and cross this top rather than try and guess it at this level of $47 because potentially we could see prices as low as 39 or around $35, which is a saving of about 23%. So I would rather risk the 7% to the upside, missing out on that 7% as in buying in now and hoping it goes up then potentially seeing a drop of 17 to 24%. So I could pick some Solana up for a lot cheaper than I could buying it now with the hope of it going further up. From this point, if this does happen to be the top, then I'm looking for a target of $68 and $79. So that gives us a percentage return from the top of 35% and 58%. Following that, I just keep using my fibs and I'm going to work up from this point. So if you guys set your chart up and lay your fibs out like this, 
then you can see some good price projection targets. This one comes in at around 115%. Should we get to $107? Now, measuring another time frame from the low, the major low that we set in December of 2020 to the current peak, which is sitting at, call it $50, it's 130 days. We've seen Solana do 113 days down and previously it was just 30 days up. So we are well and truly extended on this bull section of Solana. Now, this could just be the first bull section in a five wave series. We could basically see this being the first and we have a correction and then we head up again. Now, if that happens to be the major correction that we see now, because we have extended for 130 days straight up, I'm going to move the FIB back to the lowest point on Solana's chart here at around $1.15. That brings us out at around $25.60 as a potential 50%. I happen to think we won't get that far just yet, but potentially a 29 to $32 level, which brings us into the 61% zone or at least a 38% fall from the top. So I'm willing to wait on Solana until we see a decisive breakout above the high, above 50 bucks, get a close above there, get some more volume as we break out. Because if we don't get that, then I think we might be sideways in this zone between $40 and $50, or potentially we'll have to retest the levels that we've set just a two weeks ago at around $30 to $32. If I hadn't bought in already, I would be waiting for a break of the top. I want to see confirmation of a close above these highs of $50. I want to see some volume come in because otherwise I think it might be a little bit safer to wait on the sidelines to get a break down or a more uh, solid sideways accumulation at these levels between the 40 and $50 region, something like this before we begin to move. So I think the reward to risk lies in the fact of waiting a little bit longer to decide whether we want to buy in or not. Long term, I definitely think Solana's got a lot of big upside potential. I definitely think Solana's going to be going pretty solidly through the summer of 2021. Just waiting to see what happens next, especially as the market is just rounding over after two massive moves from late March into mid April. And then again from mid April, just recently, a couple of days ago into early May. So we've already had two very strong runs without much of a pullback. If the market can do that again, great. But the probabilities aren't on our side for that to happen after seeing two of them already. Now, if it does happen, obviously the percentage is going to be a lot lower. We're looking at 60% up to that first one, around 70%. This is called momentum trading. We want to be trading with the momentum of the market. We break the tops, we're in. We head down, we wait for consolidation or we find a level of support and we buy in and then play with the momentum, play to the upside with the momentum. Should we go sideways here, then something like this might eventuate and the time frame from February into late March was a total of about 30 days from the top to the bottom before it started to move again. So we'd only have to wait about a month from that period. I'm gonna measure it from this top and the month brings us out into later this month. So it's only a few weeks away. If we can be patient, we could get a better price or we could see a confirmed breakout, which means our money wouldn't be sitting on the sidelines for weeks and we just wait for that move to the upside. So keep a track of this chart, set your alerts, have your plan ready because anything can change at the drop of a dime when it comes to this chart. But you can use this moving forward, especially with the fundamentals, and we'll continue to update Solana in future videos. And what video wouldn't be complete if we looked at Solana and the Ethereum pair and Solana and the BTC pair? Ethereum has been going on a wild run, but it looks like we've started to top out at 2% of ETH value. It's on its way down at the moment, hopefully finding some support around the 1.3%, but I wouldn't be surprised if we happen to come down and test this region where we've seen some support and resistance already. Now, if we move this to the top, which looks like it has been set now, a 50% zone brings us at 1% of ETH value, 1.1%, and a little further down, basically 1%. So somewhere in this region right here. Onto Sol BTC, it has had a massive volume day. This is on FTX exchange. For the top. If we don't happen to find some support at these levels and consolidate, then we could be in for the same outcome as we're seeing with Sol Ethereum, bottom, top, and we've started to come down into another zone. We could fall for further than this, but this is my first target zone. So for Sol BTC, we're going to apply the same to uh, metrics here using our FIB, paste it to the bottom, anchor it to the top. 50% brings us out at around 52,000 sats. 
Any further down is around 40,000 and the higher level is around 63,000. Ideally, you want to see some consolidation and a continued move up, but I'm ready for all options. And should we see it fall, then at least this lines up with a few other levels like the previous top in September 2020 and the low before we took off. So the 40,000 to 50,000 level is a possibility. Let's keep watching this. From those charts, BTC isn't looking like it's breaking to the upside. Sol ETH looks like it is heading down and Sol USD looks like it could be overextended. But if we get a move on Bitcoin, then this will continue to move up and the sol chart will the sol btc will continue to move down and sol eth at the moment looks like it's probably going to have a little bit more time to the downside after breaking these lows now i feel like i've just scratched the surface of the sol research there is so much to dive into especially with the decentralization the tokenomics the founders what's going on with the company what are we looking forward to but we're going to keep tracking it on the charts as well because i believe we're going to see some action in the coming weeks most definitely on the USD chart. Now, if you aren't tracking Solana, I suggest you do if it's something that interests you. You can use the trading view link down below or the Blockfolio link, which you can set alerts to and trade on that app. Now, this is a project that I absolutely love. So I'm gonna to continue to follow up with Solana on the channel. So be sure to follow along, hit the subscribe button, bell notification icon so you can be updated with the time sensitive content. Leave us a like if you enjoyed this and you wanna see more of it down below. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter for daily Q&As and updates of my retirement fund portfolio. And if you are interested in trading Solana or anything else in its ecosystem like Serum or FTX, then go and check out the links to SwiftX and Binance in the description down below. You'll get $10 of free Bitcoin if you sign up and verify with SwiftX and 10% off your trading fees with Binance. Link down below. I'll see you guys at the next video. Thanks once again. Until then, have more fun to get more done.